What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC video. Guess what just happened? Okay, no, did they get, it's like, it's like Dora the Explorer, you guys guessed. Uh, we had the first uh, VGC Series 2 tournament. Now Series 2 doesn't officially start until February, uh, but because the next major is Series 2, there's effectively no reason to practice Series 1 unless you just feel like it. So. All of like the online tournaments are now series two so we're going to get into these results with our friend main here but before we do that if you guys enjoy leave a like subscribe turn on notifications uh and answer my comment question of the day uh what do you think will end up being popular in series two but main uh any any thoughts on what we see like just initially like what we like see like uh, as the overall like trend um so just looking at like just like just like top eight teams um there's a lot of variety you know people claim that there's no variety at all in vgc but there's a ton of it there's even teams that came like the one in fourth place yotam doesn't have a single paradox mod on it yeah second place didn't have a single paradox mod either neither did second place so like people who are worried that paradox were going to ruin the format um not if you're good because yeah there's no paradox on two of the top four teams uh fifth place also doesn't have a single paradox uh sixth place has one yeah, so there are a lot of people who are still playing with their Series 1 teams and having success. Yeah, I, I so here's the thing. It feels like, um, and let me share my screen with you so you can see what I'm looking at when I talk about it. Um, it feels like Series 2 is less... I saw this tweet the other day and I thought it was completely true, so I'm just going to steal it word for word. I forget who said it. Series 2 is less about the Pokemon that were added uh, and like the Paradox Mons in more how the inclusion of Paradox Mons is changing Series 1 teams to adapt to them, because it's a very small change in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, Flutter Main is like huge, but if you actually take a look at it, count the Flutter Mains in top eight. Um, did it, well, did it, it didn't top, it didn't top four, mm -hmm. like at all. There's one. Um, there was only one Flutter Main. There's one Flutter Main in uh... top eight. And it's, and it's like Focus Sash. It's not even like the scary set, uh, because usually they're like, um, Usually they're booster energy with like Icy Wind. This is just Focus Sash Icy Wind. So yeah, like that's that's like really cool. Like Flutter Main, the Pokemon we thought was gonna be oppressive, isn't anywhere close to what we thought it would be. Which I yeah, called. Yeah. So when I had uh, I'd covered this in like another video series with the rules being announced, I had like so people basically what's gonna happen is that it's just it's just widening in our pool of Pokemon. Some stuff will drop in usage, but they're not gonna like take over the entire thing. Um, I think what got people worried is that when Paradox were introduced, people were using it pre-Series 1. Yeah. They were using it alongside the Ruins, and that made them really impressive. Yeah, because... like we had, um, what was it? It was like Fluttermane Chi Yu that was scary because Chi Yu yeah. would- Or Roar Roaring Moon plus uh, uh, Chien Pao. Like that is really bad. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, and, and even like Dragonite plus Chien Pao was like crazy. Um, yeah. Because you would drop the defenses of everything, and then you would just extreme speed spam. So like the only yeah. thing that beat it was like Indeedee and even then Chimp has a dark type. So it's like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, so I think, rough. honestly, I think the real difference is it isn't even like the, the ruinous Pokemon aren't here because while that will make like the paradoxes better, um, I think it actually is more that the way that we play the game is a lot different than we did before we got the series one rules because now we understand the value of stuff like King Gambit. Now we know that Golden Go is a top tier, that Bax Calibur is a viable Pokemon. Even that Salamence is like still really good. And yeah. yeah, like I feel like we get it now. Like we we know what the Pokemon do, what they're supposed to do. And the way that we build teams has shifted in such a way that like, you know, uh, Fluttermane while still being like an absolute top tier getting like uh, top eight here, there's only one of them. It's not broken. Uh, and you can see it got like value out of Focus Sash instead of Protosynthesis, which is like, you know, if we look at the team, Focus Ash Icy Wind, that's meant to help out like the Paldean Tauros, because then he can combo in like a close combat Raging Bull or whatever, uh, or even like a Heat Wave from the Volcarona. This team is actually like really slow paced, and the Flutter Main is just meant to be like cleanup crew from what I can tell. Like that's that's yeah. pretty cool. It's not like a hyper yeah. offense thing. I was gonna say, so I was gonna say, like, because of the way Series 1 went, it seems like people have moved away from like super oppressively offensive sets and worry more about their positioning on the board. Um, yeah. Which is why you don't see, at least in my opinion, a bunch of like people slapping Torkoal and like uh, uh, Pinchurchin on teams to try to abuse their proto proto synthesis moves. People are using alternate items to just make these because these are just good Pokemon 
that you can use with good items to get good results. You don't need to spam the protosynthesis ability. Yeah, to win. actually, to let, let's count the total amount of Torkoal and and Pink Urchin in, in top 16, ready? So none in first place, none in second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, to the top 16, ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13, 14, 15, not a, yeah, not a single, 16. no not Torkoal. Until 18. Yeah, not no Torkoal. 18, no Torkoal managed then. to break top 16 because you know what? It's not it's not necessary, really. Because you can use the, the Protosynthesis mons, like you, you can use like the booster energy, right? But even if you don't use the booster energy, you can just be like, oh, well, now I have a favorable matchup versus Torkoal. <laughs> like it feels yeah. like it's like a double edged <laughs> sword, right? Uh, yeah, because the booster energy oftentimes is boosting a pokemon's speed so you can't really trick room up and now torko is just sitting on the field setting up sun to get knocked out yeah do you want to break down this uh this first place team like i feel like we can just get in depth with like top four and then like we'll, we'll like call it from yeah because like we can, we can go with the yeah, winning because we talked about like the trends but now we'll, we'll talk about top four so you know first place hobbit vgc well-established player phenomenal player uh we see safety goggles arcanine uh, with like a standard set Terra Water, like this is like a series one, not series one, like a pre-series one set. Uh, we have Terra Flying Roaring Moon with Acrobatics, Throat Chop, Tail and Protect. Uh, Sash, I, honestly, Iron Bundle winning makes me sad because I, I hate that Pokemon so much. It's the scariest thing ever. Thumbnail Pokemon though. Um, Amoongus with Rocky Helmet, uh, Iron Hands, Brigoraf. Honestly, main. You know what? This team, while it does have three paradox mons this feels like a series one team somehow because like because yeah. like iron bundle would just be like some other fast special attacker maybe like a maybe like a scarf golden go iron hands would be like a hariyama ferrigraph would still be on the team and roaring moon would just be some other like fast physical attacker it maybe be, like a garchomp yeah it, well, it, it would be like either you know salamence or mostly hydragon dragon yeah. dark Oh yeah, Hydra um, Iron, that'd be the one, yeah. Yeah, Iron Bundle is probably just like your Tailwind, Icy Wind, uh, what you call it? Uh, what's the crow? Speed Control. <laughs> it's, it's like yeah, your Speed, speed control, control, man. And, yeah, like, it's just your Speed Control. Yeah, and honestly, like Iron Bundle with, like, is like a really great Speed Control Pokemon. If you don't know, um, Iron Bundle is one point faster than Fluttermane. Fluttermane uh, hits, what's the speed tier? Uh, 155, Iron Bundle hits, not 155, what am I saying? <laughs> It hits 206. Uh, Iron Bundle hits 206. Uh, Fluttermane hits 205. So when they both have the booster energy boosting their speed, Iron Bundle's faster, meaning it can icy win Fluttermanes. And honestly, I think that's a reason a lot of Fluttermanes probably struggled to break. Um, oh, it's probably uh, struggled to break top 16. Uh, was probably because like, you know, there like the Iron Bundle was running rampant here. And there's probably a couple of Iron Bundles. There's one in uh third place there's one in seventh place yeah that would make sense because i feel like iron yeah. bundle is like always a response to Fluttermane. if if you get what i mean it's just yeah, like yeah, a better speed control mon and it's like terrifying yeah because like Fluttermane, i've seen so far the common items are either focus ash life orb or uh, booster energy um so once the bundle drops its speed all three of those items essentially become useless because it's probably going to get knocked out by whatever mm -hmm. the partner is yeah um Especially if you have like Roaring Moon next to it, which you can then like hit with Throw Chop, which does great neutral damage into Fluttermane. Or in this case, for this specific Roaring Moon. Um, actually, can we talk about this Roaring Moon set? Yeah, so this is like a fairly standard Roaring Moon. We we have seen Terra Flying Protosynthesis Acrobatics in the past. It's actually really common in singles, but in doubles, it's also like super good, especially if you're running the attack boosting set. Because the thing is that like Iron Bundle. So, so like the team right like it has like a it has like a, a trick room mode but it also has like a fast mode like it's this is like the definition of a best of three team you have so many leads that you can run but like the iron bundle roaring moon lead versus other offensive teams means that like you can run attack boosting roaring moon instead of speed because iron bundle will okay. just yeah iron bundle will just uh focus at not focus at uh will just like be able to like icy wind everything the point where like the, the roaring moon will then be able to like tailwind yep, outspeed everything yeah and hit something with like a terra flying acrobatics which 110 with adaptability that's a 220 base power move yeah that's insane damage that's just like way too much yeah and throw chops also really good for sylveon you don't even have to tear it a wall out sylveon because you just stop all sound based moves and for rigor F does the same thing with imprison hyper voice and imprison trick room yeah this this team seems to have an answer for everything um even if you look like the the Arcanine, it's a standard set Terra Water. 
when it's terra fire it kind of with snarl it walls out the flutter mains when you tear water it kind of walls out the iron bundles mm-hmm. um it, it walls out gold dangos uh you can use it to burn opposing iron hands and roaring moon so it's, it's like one of the best utility bonds in the entire series right now at the beginning which i predicted by the way yeah you know what else is crazy so they have protect on three mons and in their trick room mode they're probably only gonna protect on one of them ever yeah, most yeah, likely. and it's probably gonna be like Arcanine or like Roaring Moon Iron Bundle. That that's crazy actually. Their entire Trick Room mode is just hyper offense because it's like Iron Hands fake out uh, Trick Room with the Ferrigaraf, and then you like Throat Spray, uh, Hyper Voice hyper Spam, voice. and then like yeah, Amumia's. Which, yeah, that's like a crazy. Oh, that's terrifying for Trick Room. Which make which makes sense to me because um I think once you get on the Trick Room, you want to start picking up those KOs. Um, and then this this uh this Iron Hands is actually insane because it's terror steel heavy slam so it's hitting all of the pokemon in the format for neutral at, at worst or super effective at best yeah um and, and it then goes like positively in the flutter man you just one shot it yeah because you terror steel it can't hit you um if it does have a terrify on its side then you still live with your assault vest and then you can like drain points to get your health back next turn and it'll still probably go down yeah um heavy slam protects you from like from like what because does from like uh does intimidate matter on your weight based moves uh yeah okay so you can still get intimidated from opposing arcanine but in that phase you do have your own iron bundle yeah and you so you, this team does seem like it covers everything pretty well mm-hmm. it's, and it's in like the face of a torkoal like you don't even have to like terra you can just like drain punch it because you have a cork drive boost versus you get an attack boost it, it's like a crazy team i like it a lot yeah it's um awesome. Second place is like another trick room team, but this one's kind of cool too. So this one has no uh, no paradox forms at all. We have Life Orb, Ar- Arbeliva, Terrain Pulse, Giga Drain, Earth Power, Strength Sap, which honestly Terrain Pulse is really cool because it's able to take advantage of Ndidi or its terrain. Um, it can also switch in on opposing Ndidis and get rid of the terrain every time because if they like just have to like eat a hit. Uh, Covert Cloak Armor is kind of cool. I, yeah, I don't I love know. It. I th- I guess Covert Cloak is just reliable because, like, if you get rocks, you can't get rocks. Yeah, it's rock slide flinch, yeah, right? rock, yeah, rock, rock flinches. That's yeah. Really no rock slide flinch, no fake out in case the psychic terrain's gone. And I guess that's good because you have Arbeliever, right? Uh, just so like looking standard at, Ndidi, too. Looking at this team, Ndidi on Rouge might really be the play for this series because you just look at the, like what they do together. Um, you can wide guard those uh, those spread type attacks from Bundle and Fluttermane. Uh, if you decide, if you're facing down a Roaring Moon, you have Terra Fairy, Dazzling Gleam, you'll probably KO it. If they Terra Steel, you can probably just uh, Armor Cannon it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can hit for Psychic Damage into Iron Hands. You <laughs> you just kind of yeah. just wreck through all the Paradox mods. So I, I wonder if that's going to pick up some more mm-hmm. uh, than, it, than it already was in Series 1. Yeah, what's crazy about this team is it feels like it has one fire type switch in and it's armorish. So like it feels like it does bad versus opposing like Volcarona or opposing like just fire types in general, but they played it well enough that like they didn't have an yeah. issue. And King Gambit's like really cool too. Like Black Glasses, Terra, Dark, Defiant. Like you're you can tell they're obviously just leaning into like, okay, if I'm under Trick Room, I need to pick up KOs like immediately. So um, I think their thought process may have been, they may have just made like a meta call that Volcarona wasn't going to be that used. People were going to lead into the Paradox. Yeah. And then if they do come with a fire type, it'll probably be like Arcanine where they can take advantage of Defiant. Yeah. Also, I just realized there's like no Dozos at all. Oh, yeah. 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 I knew Dozo wasn't going to be anywhere on this. I, I yeah. told people when it got announced, I don't know how reliable having your Don Dozo on the field versus like two Paradox Pokemon is going to be, especially if it's like Iron Bundle. And it looks like, like Flutter, Flutter actually, main. It looks like no one even like entered with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. People... Honestly, here's the thing. You know what that means? It doesn't mean that's bad. It means that it's gonna come back eventually. Maybe. Yeah. I think it, it'll. It, everything always comes back. Yeah. But at least for right now, people are probably afraid to go into those two v ones against yeah. freeze dry iron bundle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Iron bundle is actually crazy into the the dozo. But all right. So third place Scarlet skill Iron Jugulus is crazy. I didn't think Iron Jugulus would ever like make its way into the top four um but we see just uh booster energy cork drive tailwind that's honestly kind of cool I, I don't know if it's special attack boosting or speed i would assume it's speed to reliably get tailwind off but what's crazy here is the assault vest terra fairy sandy shocks and honestly we're we're like starving for good fairy types and sandy shocks kind of fits the bill it's 100 base speed or it's 101 base speed 
It's a 121 base special attack and it's like decently bulky. It, it kind of fits the niche. And it also has ground stab to beat like steel types. Yeah, yeah, that's probably exactly what it's for because the it's probably your steel type matchup with the most Pokemon. Mm -hmm. I'm looking back at the Iron Jugulus again without seeing the actual spread. I'm wondering, like, because they're Terra Electric and they don't have an electric move, that's probably defensive Terra. So I'm wondering if they have more of like a bulky Iron Jugglist so they can get Tailwind off and then just kind of spam because they have Snarl and Air yeah, Slash for like, it could like, be, flinch, yeah. for like flinches into survive hits. Yeah, so it doesn't it, seem like it's it doing like, damage. It might be like a fat, fast one. And like yeah. the electric is just there to like make sure they don't get like KO'd by like Terra Electric rotom or some other like just random like yeah exactly thing something like to beat flying types other, yeah electric type moves or like some kind of um or just to get rid of the weakness so like iron bundle doesn't blow you up yeah uh, actually gold, that's probably it <laughs> yeah gold dango doesn't blow you up um <laughs> yeah because they're only weak to ground yeah they, they, they can't even tear a water because of freeze dry mm -hmm. so yeah that's probably what the electric terror is for yeah uh iron bundle standard uh we see Terrifier, Paldean Toro, Safety Guard, that's another standard one. Uh, Terra Water, or Guadberry, Amoongus. They're usually Rocky Helmets, so that's kind of cool that they're running a Guadberry. Honestly, this team, it's like prepared for Mouse Hold, so I see why they wouldn't run Rocky Helmet. Uh, the Vax Calibre is kind of cool. Yeah, uh, so the, the, the Toros, real quick, before we move from that, even though yeah. it's standard, right now, just playing on like the ladder, it actually seems like it goes great into like everything, because nothing actually hits it, um, except for like Iron Bundle, but like it it takes like neutral from uh Fluttermane. Um it intimidates and takes hits from the uh Roaring Moon. Um even the uh It can like one shot Roaring Moon. Yeah, it can close combat back, close combat it back yeah. and knock it out. Iron Hand doesn't do that much. Like not, none none of this stuff in the format right now does that much damage into Toro yeah. except Iron Bundle, which is probably why it's one to yeah. two. Honestly, I think that like uh Fire Paldean Tauros and Arcanine are gonna see a huge resurgence this format just because of how good Iron Hands is. And like an intimidate into a will o wisp is just it's a hard shutdown. They can't recover it's from crippling. that. It, it, it's crippling. Yeah, exactly. like they, they just crippling. straight up can't come back. All right, and final team, series one. <laughs> so yo Tom, uh Wait, we okay. see standard annihilate, uh the mouse hold annihilate setup, uh tailwind, quash, murkrow, standard golden ghost, standard armory, standard and DD, but no, it's Rocky Helmet and DD, so I guess it's meant That's to be nice. other mouse. Dude, this is literally just a series one team in a top forward. Yeah, no. All right. I don't we only have to break that one down because because we know what that does. Here's we, we here's the deal. Here's I the deal. I want to say one thing. Yeah. The mouse hold leaned so hard into getting that beat up off. Friend guard, terror ghost, safety goggles. No yeah. redirection. <laughs> no redirection. No fake out, nothing. You oh, no, it's got to follow me. No, no, what I mean is like, so you can't redirect it with the Moongus because of the yeah. Tarragos. No, that and makes also, sense. And also, you can't fake it out because it's Terra Ghost. They lean, they lean all in and they top forward because they were getting that beat up off. Yeah, honestly, see, here's the thing. Like, that proves that, like, Series 2, while it, it broadened our, our horizons, right? There's more Pokemon you can use. Team building is probably more open than it was in Series 1. I think, like, oh, that's so that's a controversial take. Because, you know, some people think that the power creep is going to, like, come in any second now. But I think for the time being, this is just more diverse Series 1, which is already diverse. Look at this rainbow of Pokemon. Yeah, like... To be the fair, way... it's the first tournament, but still. But even then, like, we have... This is this series is going to last until March. There's just not enough time for this to be anything more, in my opinion, than basically, like, Series 1.5. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's going to be something where it's like the the paradox just like like six teams of paradox is not getting you anywhere. Um, you need to to be able to play series one extended with these mods involved. Be prepared for a couple extra Pokemon, but you still need to be prepared for all of the series one threats because those are also still very very strong. Yeah, my 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 one hot take, not even a hot take. I think it's just true. King Gambit stocks are way up just because Sucker Punch on Iron Bundle and Sucker Punch on like. Flutter main is just like super good. Like I think that's literally it. Sucker punch on Flutter main. I, 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 without even seeing a calculation, I know it just KOs. I don't yeah. care what turn. I think that's what Black Glasses is for on this team. Actually, I think Black Glasses is just to make sure you KO. I don't uh, care if they Terra into something. They have the Terra into like Fairy, and even then, who, who knows? Because like if you could just Terra Dark, that thing's defense yeah. that is so bad. Here, four defense Flutter main, which is what they tend to run. Sucker punch 107 with a life orb. Black Glasses, I think it still KOs. 97 yeah no it, it's it's probably meant to just make sure you ko 
Yeah. Because if they're terror dark, it's guaranteed. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, I mean, any any like last thoughts before we wrap up the vid? No. Uh, you know, you guys, let us know what you guys think of the series. Um, I know it's just starting, so you probably don't have like a a great grasp on it. But like, what do you want to try? What do you want to see? Try. What do you think is gonna have success? What sleeper? Or what sleepers from series one might make uh, uh, an assertion, assurgence into the meta? Let us know in the comments below. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Exactly that. Yeah, if you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications. Uh, make sure you follow Main. His link will be in the description down below. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.